Welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Nungrai from Amphic Bible School, Australia. This is the subject of Word in Faith Ministries International lecturer Dr. Mafuranwa. In this presentation, I'm going to walk you through the life and history of Archbishop E.H. Kuti, who is the founder of Forward in Faith Ministries International. The life of Ezekiel Guti is found in the book written by Gail Erwin. The book's title is called African Apostle. In this book, the life of Apostle Ezekiel Guti is revealed and this story must not fade into the bushes of Africa. The story portrays the loss, the pain, the victory that surrounds this man when he was growing up but now he has found a very strong ministry it portrays that God can use virtually anyone despite the background or the situation in life that's the way that God has used African Apostle E.H. Gucci even coming from humble beginnings he is the founder of Word in Faith Ministries International, which has grown to more than 125 nations and is still growing. Antina Wang was born on the 5th of May in 1923 to Dokas and Nguanzeni. He was born into a polygamous family. Young Wandina Wang had to be a surrogate parent and help with the upkeep of the family. This was because his father was mainly not available as he had many wives. At an early age of 14, Handina Wangu had to leave home to find a job in the farms. One of his visits back home, his mom informed him of what she had heard from a preacher. She had heard the fact that there was a place called hell. This caused Handinawangu a sleepless night as he tried to find out how to avoid hell. He knew there was a creator in heaven, so he went to the jungle seeking answers. In 1938, God revealed himself to Ezekiel in the form of music in the air. Then an angel appeared saying, Fear not, sin not. That was enough for Handinawangu to know that God was real and listening. After the encounter, Handinawangu started school, which was five hours walk away. He sold his only chicken to get books. Kuti's desire to know God more drew him to Fumba Mountains. There, the second encounter occurred as light, and an angel raised and lowered hands. This confirmed God's presence in his life. For 20 years, this angel was seen by people as Guti preached. In 1944, Guti was working for the government. He met with some unproductive friends that he went to a dance with. This is when he saw the falling stars and he went home shaken. The Holy Spirit later on told him he was chosen for other activities, not that dense place. Page 29 of African Apostle says that he was weak spiritually and got married to a girl who did not know God in 1946. He was shown stars in heaven as the people he will lead to heaven. In 1947, Handinawangu met Enoch Gwanzura who baptized him in water in Harare. In 1947 as well, Kuti started speaking in tongues. In the following year, 1948, he saw visions of the second coming of Christ and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. According to Gail Erwin in the book African Apostle, page 41, Guti started preaching at a place called Rhodesia Force Club in 1949 and he moved into places around Harare preaching and many miracles happening. Later on he moved to Highfield which had a bad reputation. Many 
doors were closed to Guti, but he would preach whenever he could. He even had to travel at night, but God was faithful, even lighting his path in the dark between the year 1950 and 1951. God tells Ezekiel in 1953 that he had given him a hand to heal, and that was when he was staying in Highfield. He would be woken up by God around 3 to 4 a.m. to pray. In 1956, Guti purchased a cottage 593 in Highfield, Harare. He was compelled to read the whole Bible verse by verse whilst he was staying in Highfield. He was also told by God to go abroad for training and Cottage 593 was purchased through prayer as well for Africa and there was appearance of the Lord in the room when he was praying with one of his prayer partners. He saw the visions of the two moon fighting and in 1958 Guti was going around into tents preaching and there was healing of a woman who was seriously ill at Chibuwe rural lands in Kariba. At one time he had to drink water from the same container with the dogs. In 1960, God commands Ezekiel to go to Bindura and that was the beginning of the ministry on 12 May 1960. Glory to God! According to Gail Erwin, Ezekiel Guti started to receive prophecies around the year 1950s. One of the prophecies included being asked by God to change his name to Ezekiel, one of the prophets in the Bible. He also had a vision of feeding many thousands of sheep. Because of a need to make a living, Ezekiel Guti started a carpentry job. It got down later on and he was left with no job. As a result, he later got another job at the city council. One of the days, the manager asked Ezekiel Guti to dig a ditch, which initially he wanted to refuse. But after prayer, he realized that other members were digging the ditches and there were people like him. So he humbled himself and he dug a hole despite holding carpentry qualifications. This result to him being promoted. Meanwhile, he continued his aggressive preaching and many people did not like this in their churches as he continued to open other churches and so Ezekiel Guti was banned from these churches. The reason they gave for not allowing him into their churches was because he was not ordained. As a result, Ezekiel Guti had to travel in many places needing transport this led him to participate in a race where he won a bicycle which he used to travel for preaching. In 1956, Cottage 593 was purchased in Highfield. At this cottage, many people's lives were changed. Many people also received their healing. It was a busy place as many homeless people were cared for at this cottage 593. This resulted in Ezekiel Guti being unable to go to work as large crowds would be in attendance at cottage 593 requiring prayer. The author writes that whilst Guti was supporting himself as a carpenter at one Catholic school, God spoke to him, commanding him to go to another place. His wife had left him, he was in trouble, he was not allowed to preach, and now he was being told to go somewhere. He wept 
and prayed, but he obeyed. On arrival in Mutare, he conducted services and meetings. God showed him where to go next, and he went to Vumba, where he found that a number of people were waiting for him already. And he later on went to Nyanyazi, where many cripples were healed. He also went to Chipinge, and many miracles occurred as he continued to preach Jesus. At one meeting, he prayed for rain to stop during a meeting, and afterwards, because people wanted rain, he prayed as well for the rain to start. He later on met Nicholas, one of the African evangelists from South Africa, and he joined his ministry. Because of his popularity, Guti got in trouble with Nicholas Bengu as well, and he even got enmity from disciples, even those that were his disciples. According to Gail, Erwin Bindura became the birthplace for Zimbabwe Assemblies of God, Sayoja. In this place, the blind were healed, and during his time in Bindura, God spoke to Ezekiel Guti that he will preach in English. The ministry of Zayoja continued to grow despite challenges. In 1968, Guti succeeded in getting a plot Highfield Revival Center, and People prayed and worked hard and the building continued. The church gained recognition by the government in 1967. Lunch ministries were started at Wanda Shopping Center and in 1969 Highfield Revival Center was completed. Around 1970 there were eight churches. As the church began to grow, Guti began to hear that people had seen the growth, but some were worried that he had no proper Bible school training. On page 104 of the African Apostle, it says that people started raising money by selling second-hand clothes to send Ezekiel to Bible school. It was hard work, because when Ezekiel went to school, he found the school, but after five months, the school was destroyed. Following closure of the school, Ezekiel heard of Christ for the Nations Institute, so he went there. Gordon Lindsay, who was the president of the school, accepted him and transferred the credits from his former school that had been closed. Ezekiel Guti had no money. There was a pastor who was starting a church there. After hearing about Guti and that he was coming from Africa, this pastor asked if Guti could work for him. In return, the pastor would support him and bring buses for his ministry. Guti informed the pastor that he would pray about it. Following his prayer, Guti was told by God that he God's anointing would be taken from him if he, uh, if he said yes to work under the pastor. In the end, Guti obeyed God, and the Dallas pastor mentioned that Guti was going to regret that decision. According to Gail Erwin on page 122 of the African Apostle, to complete the call to evangelize, the world and to provide training opportunities, several approaches are being taken to evangelize the world. There is a child evangelism department that is set up and evangelistic teams hold services for students. Each year as well, in February, pastors gather from around the world for training at the Deeper Life Ministry has spread and extended into many countries reaching more than 120 nations. The author writes that following his refusal to work under the pastor, Guti went back to talk to God. God spoke to him, rewarding him for obeying him 
staying 14 and a half years without a wife. He was now free to marry. On his return to Zimbabwe, he told the elders of the church who helped him choose a wife for him, and Yuna became his wife. The new vision involved a move to localize the churches. Due to the heavy workload, in 1981 Guti had to go to America to rest. Everything initially was done from one office. After returning from America, he was given a new vision by God for the work of the Lord. The structure of the church was now changed to allow many offices in Zimbabwe which would handle their own work. Part of the vision was to develop small groups in homes to allow all the people to grow. On page 125, Gail Erwin quotes Ezekiel, saying he wants to finish his work before the Lord takes him to him. Gail also lists that Ezekiel wants people to hold on to his teaching and to remain strong in the Lord and press towards the mark. Ezekiel Guti made the prayer for Africa in 1957. He cries for Africa before the Lord, that it may not be destroyed. He asks God for mercy and kindness, for a lighter judgment of Africa. Gail Erin completes the book African Apostle by commending the depth of Bible knowledge that Ezekiel Guti has. Erin says Ezekiel's practical teaching is simple, sophisticated, and is of high integrity. Gail observes that Ezekiel's house is full of people, including those that are abandoned, and pastors as well that are in training, showing the loving and dedication nature in Ezekiel Guti. This book is very factual and informative, and it is fascinating even when you are reading it. It reveals this genuineness of the ministry that dispels any doubt. I get the confirmation that Dr. Guti is truly a servant of God who is obedient and committed to the work of God and is full of love for everyone. Gail Erwin is indeed a good writer as he showed professionalism with no bias given that he is from a completely different cultural background. I find this book and I recommend it to anyone who is keen on knowing the history of Apostle Ezekiel Handinawangu Guti. Thank you.